How you going? It's Ruby here with another sketchbook tour. So if you haven't seen my first one, I did a sketchbook tour a few months ago and I'm gonna pop a link up here for you to watch it. I started this sketchbook in May and I completed it in July. Quite quickly for me, but I think it's because I've just got so many ideas, new concepts, new compositions and new material combinations that I really wanted to try out. I'm using this sky as a launching pad for experimentation to then take what I learned from this and apply it to larger artworks. I actually have a solo show next year at um, Floating Goose in Adelaide for the Fringe Festival in February. I will be sharing my journey of making towards that exhibition with you guys through YouTube. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel to follow me along that journey. Okay, so let's just dive straight in. Here I've got a Montmartre sketchbook. It's a really cheap one, but it's great for mucking about in and it made me feel not precious about using the paper and making mistakes. So the first page is actually a continuation of the ISO drawing challenge that I started when COVID-19 hit. I was setting lots of different challenges for myself and anybody that wanted to play along at home. And this one was drawing a cityscape. I decided that I'd like to draw places that I love so two of my favorite places are um, Tokyo and New Orleans and I'm super bummed I can't travel right now so I decided to travel through the internet using Google Maps so I picked a couple of random streets um, on Google Maps and used those as my references Tokyo was done with a bunch of different pens including Copic markers and the drawing of New Orleans is just graphite the next drawing is of one of my favorite plants. I'm obsessed with plants that have stripes in their leaves. Just drawing from life. This is different art line pens on craft paper with watercolor paper, I think, on top and ink. So these are my first real abstract works, thinking about how I can use this sketchbook to make a bunch of studies that will hopefully inform larger works beyond the sketchbook. These are completely mixed media. Here I'm using acrylic paint, craft paper, lead pencil, colored pencil, and oil pastel. And I've actually stuck in a page of baking paper in between to make sure that there's a bit of separation between the pages. Otherwise, I was worried that the media would transfer on top of one another. The next few pages are watercolour studies um, using mixed media again that I've stuck into the book. I actually don't think these are finished and I should probably go back and continue to work on them because they're just screaming out for another layer. In these I was really interested in how I can make different marks using gouache and water on watercolour paper. I was flicking paint, wetting paper first and then applying gouache on top to see what would happen. Lots of different layers and lots of different brushes. Here is another drawing challenge. This one was actually for Onkaparinga Youth. I was doing some weekly workshops with another artist called Gemma Rose Brook, and she was drawing interiors of her house as the challenges that she set. So I decided that I'd give one a go in my own style, which is a lot more graphic, not so much focusing on realism, but more just trying to create interesting patterns, color combinations. I've got some collage in here, borrowing some of my paper that I used in a few previous pages. and. Yeah, just feeling really inspired by Matisse within these couple of works. The next page is also a kind of Matisse influenced vibe. I was really focusing on colour and invented pattern. I really love these swatch pages. This page is actually from, again, another challenge that I did for Onkaparinka Youth to complement Gemma's kind of plain air from life scenes of homes and gardens. I decided that I would focus on the figure, but do it in a different way. So with this, I decided to do a collage based on a drawing from life, sketched it out and then created almost like a stencil from the drawing and then used that to create the shapes of paper. I really like this work. I think it turned out really well. So these few pages are just experimentations. I've been doing some work for a local business designing their labels. I'm sure you'll see this come out once it's launched. 
Now we're back into the swing of more abstract studies. My favorite colors are red, white, and black. You're gonna see a lot of that in this sketchbook, but this one is really starting to think about different textures. So I'm using transparent layers. I really like washy watercolor overlapping one another to create different tones or different colors. I've also painted a whole bunch of paper with big brush strokes coming through and I've ripped that up and that's another textural layer that I've been adding into these studies. This page was actually a diptych. I really liked the two pages as individual works that complemented one another, but I kind of went a little bit too far with the page on the left, so I decided to ignore it by putting a piece of paper on top. I'm really enjoying the page on the right though. I just think it's rich with so many different textures and opacities and so much variety. I'm really enjoying this work. Here's another one, a continuation of the red, white, and black. Now I'm starting to include a patterned paper as well and craft paper. I really love this page of studies. I did this when I didn't have access to all of the things I needed in my studio. I only had a couple of pens and I decided why not do some really small studies with the idea that one of those I would blow up really large and it would be the composition for a super big work. But altogether, I think this page looks really awesome. If you haven't noticed, I really enjoy bold contrasts. I love stripes. I often am wearing stripes. I love red. I love lines. And yeah, I think this comes through pretty strong in this piece. This page is actually one of my favorites. It totally took me by surprise. The thing I love about making these works is I just don't know where they're going. I respond to each move as I make it. I know you've probably heard me say that often, but it's true. And with this, I started with soft, big brush marks of a very light tone of gouache. And from there, some stencils that I made, I just ripped up some paper, some holes in some paper, and then created the stripy shapes by only painting within that stencil shape. From there, I then included some aerosol. Aerosol was a new thing for me, but I'm really enjoying it. Continued with collage and colored pencil and oil pastel on top. I'm really interested in the power of line and how line can tell us a lot about a surface. So I've been looking a lot at maps at the moment. This page is quite simple, but I really like it. It has a really lovely flow, and that's something that I'm really interested in exploring. I am really particular about color and I often don't enjoy this kind of green, this olivey green. Yeah, I just, I don't even know why, I just really don't like it. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna challenge myself to make a work with this included in it. And I actually really like this work. There are areas of this bread that I'm enjoying, but there are other areas that just look like, I can tell I just wanted to try something. For example, the dots, I don't think they fit contextually at all, but I just wanted to throw them in to see what would happen. If you saw my second vlog, this is the work that I actually made at the winter solstice shindig I went to at my friend Gemma's house. So this is a layer, firstly, of very watery black gouache and a whole bunch of collage paper. This is another page where I thought, stuff it, I'm just gonna go all out and dive in. As a whole, it might not be as successful, but when you make smaller compositions within this spread, I think there are some really interesting things going on. I really love turning an oil pastel on its side to create a really lovely textural scrape across the paper. And I think that's working really well. This is just a doodling page. I think everybody does that, right? So these works over the next few pages are actually weirdly a kind of reject works from a larger piece I did. There is a video for this, which I'll link above for you guys. I did a larger piece using lots of different mixed media, which I wasn't enjoying. And I decided to be drastic and to cut it up into four smaller works. And it's funny how instantly when I cut it, the compositions were so much stronger and there was so much more interesting things going on within them. So this is my continuation of these works and them at their final stages. This piece 
this, believe it or not, is actually telephone doodling. So I was on a really long call and I had my pens with me and I decided to start just drawing and seeing what would happen. I guess I've been looking at a lot of maps at the moment. So thinking about topographical map lines and like weather maps and things like that. And then I just included some random pieces of paper that had aerosol sprayed on them or that I had painted with inks. I really like this work. This to me really speaks of white blood cells and that kind of thing. I think it's got a really interesting macro, micro thing going for it. I wouldn't mind taking this to the canvas to a really large painting. This work is really interesting to me. This is the first time that I've included a sense of realism within an abstract study. I think this new body of work will be very much about finding a balance between representational and non-representational work. And I have a lot of questions around this. I don't know if this works. I mean, the colors, the composition, I'm not sure yet, but this was my first move on this line of inquiry that I've been thinking about. So I'm really excited to share it with you. And for my patrons out there, I have made a video just on this piece talking about it in detail. And if you want to see it, just jump onto my Patreon. This one is another one of those pages where I just let loose and wasn't really thinking. I don't really think it's successful, but I will share it with you anyway. This one I'm enjoying more, back to the red, white and black vibes. I'm loving the organic shapes, different layers and textures. This page is just some studies and experiments using mediums with acrylic on canvas. And please don't mind my little scribbly notes. This is another just letting loose page. I actually really like this one though. I think the other ones didn't work very well. What really made it was taking a risk. So at the very end of making this spread, I got red gouache and decided to do this final layer on top. It was a risk because it definitely could have destroyed the whole thing, but in this case, it worked really well. is my first experiment with taking some of those smaller compositions on that page that I did which was just using markers and trying to extrapolate those into more developed studies. At this point I had started using a spray bottle of water in my works that would be like my first layer dabbing gouache into it and letting it bleed out and I really like the effect of that. These are probably two of my favorite pieces that I've done in this sketchbook, using the spray bottle, dripping ink, bold scribbles of bright yellow oil pastel, ripping up stencils that I had made to actually create shapes, but instead using the stencils, the reject paper to collage with. I will admit with this page, this was another spread where the two pages were working really well together. I made a very drastic decision on the right hand page, which did not turn out well, and I decided to rip it out. I tried to promise myself I wouldn't do that and I'd keep all the rejects and just learn from everything, but honestly, it was a disaster. So I decided to rip it out and just keep the left hand side page, which has a lot of interesting things about it. Here I'm using negative space to create positive shapes with white colored pencil. I'd like to try that on a bigger scale. The thing is with going bigger, you know, your pencil is a certain size in relation to your paper, which this is about A5. As soon as you go large, you need to make the same change with your materials to have the same ratio. It'll be interesting when I start doing bigger stuff, that's for sure. And this is the last page. This is actually something I did on watercolor paper. I thought, yeah, why not try some sticky tape to create some shiny points? I don't really know if it works. It kind of just looks not intentional to me, but I really like shiny things in contrast to matte things. And that is the end of this sketchbook. Thank you so much for watching my second sketchbook tour. I don't really know how to finish this video, but what I would like to say is I really appreciate your support and um, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback. So please leave me a comment and please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. 
I'm going to be continuing to make videos on YouTube sharing my processes and experimentation all leading up to this new solo exhibition next year. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching and this is Ruby Chu signing out.